these are the chats these chats will help you to understand what all requests were being sent by the client so if the client was trying to download the antivirus updates for semantic or it was trying to do a windows update okay and these are all uh, the detailed information for all the packets that are present in this particular capture file so that was all about expert information composite so if you are troubleshooting uh, network delays uh, you are troubleshooting where a lot of retransmissions are happening the download speed is very low you can always use expert info composite to drill down uh, to a statistical view of the capture file and to see how many errors have you seen and how many uh, chats have you seen the next thing they are going to see is enabled protocols now Wireshark to look at that you can go to the analyze tab uh, you can click on the analyze menu and then choose enabled protocols now Wireshark uses dissectors to analyze each and every protocol each dissector helps Wireshark to um, to dissect the packets for that particular protocol and to understand how the packets should look like. You should also understand that uh, disabling a protocol prevents higher layer protocols from being displayed. So, for example, if you disable Ethernet, then you won't be able to see anything. So, so suppose this is your packet. If you disable the Internet protocol from the enable protocol section then you won't be able to see any information from internet protocol TCP or or from HTTP because these are higher layer protocols however you will be able to see Ethernet and frame it will it won't be much useful but it's always important to know what you are disabling so if you want to disable any protocols that are unwanted or you, you want to disable some dissectors you can do it from the enabled protocols section so as far as this protocol dissectors are concerned that each protocol has its own dissector so uh, for dissecting a particular packet may involve multiple protocols so right now if I have highlighted this packet we have at least five dissectors that were included because we wanted to dissect HTTP, TCP, IP, Ethernet and the frame layers Wireshark has some uh, special tools and options that were provided that are provided for analyzing HTTP traffic. Let's take a look at them. Okay. Now I will go to statistics. I will go to HTTP and click on load distribution and create statistics. Okay. Now you can see that out of the HTTP packets that were seen in this particular capture file HTTP requests by the server address were one that was for this URL HTTP request by HTTP host were for liveupdate.semanticliveupdate.com so that that gives you a perspective uh, to look at as to how many requests were sent as a, uh, as a host and how many requests were for the server address the other option that you have here is packet counter okay create statistics this will give you that uh, out of the total http packets there was one packet which contained the http request packet that was http get request and all the other packets were either broken information success redirection client or server error so if you are troubleshooting HTTP errors or uh, unsuccessful downloads you can always take a look at the packet counter as to see how many packets that you saw in each of these sections The third option that we have here is HTTP requests. This will list out all the requests or uh, all the HTTP requests that were seen in this particular capture file.
One of the most important functions that are provided by Wireshark is the ability to follow a TCP stream. With the help of that, you can see the entire data that was transmitted, uh, including the request from the client and the response from the server in any TCP transaction. So these TCP transactions are actually seen as TCP streams in the, in the packet captures. So you can right click on any of the files and click on follow TCP stream. Now, now that will show you a window like this and in the background you can see that the TCP stream equal to zero. So this is the first stream that was found in this capture file. You can see the request from 33.4 to 30.43. If you click on that option, that will, you will see that the request that was sent by the semantic agent. If you want to see the response from the server, you can highlight the second part where the source is 43 and the destination is 4. This is the data that was transmitted from the server to the client. A lot of times this data will be encrypted, but some of the data can be readable. So here we go. We found some. Uh, this is the log file that is being sent for for from the client to the server, and this is regarding installation. So registry key to hide agent from add remove programs. So while this transfer was in progress, the capture was taken. So this is how you can analyze TCP streams to look at the, da the data that was transferred in any file. Now you have the option of looking at the IP destinations that will help you to analyze or that will help you to take a look at what were the IP addresses that were involved in this, trans uh, in this packet capture. So to do that, you click on analyze. Uh, you click on statistics, and then click on IP destinations. Okay. So we have only two IP addresses. We have only two IP addresses in this capture file, and in that you can see the port numbers. So. Ten dot sixty dot two hundred dot sixty three. Whenever IP destination was this IP address, the port number that was being used was eighty eighty. And whenever the the destination was one dot sixty one, it was a random port. So we can conclude that this is the IP address of the server and this is the IP address of the client because it is using the source port numbers as uh, as as arbitrary port numbers. And when the destination IP address was changed to 1.61, that is for a reply from the server to the client, the destination port number will also be the same, that is arbitrary port numbers. Another option that you have here is IP addresses. Now you can see that how many packets were from how many IP addresses, this data you can see from this particular option that will help you to create the necessary filters so if you have received a raw capture file from a server which includes activity from multiple IP addresses now you want to know which are the which are the IP addresses that have sent the top amount of packets you can you can come to the statistics tab and um, you can click on IP addresses that will tell you how, what are the IP addresses that have sent the maximum amount of packets and then you can look at the activity from that IP address by using the display filters and analyze the traffic accordingly. Suppose you are baselining your network and you want to see what all protocols that are running in your network that are sending the top amount of packets to see uh, so that you can create necessary exceptions in your firewalls or you can try to baseline your network traffic as to see what the net, what the normal network what is the normal network traffic look like so to do that you can always take a look at the protocol hierarchy and uh, that will tell you a lot of important things about your network so we can go to statistics and you can click on protocol hierarchy help of that you will be able to see what all protocols are running in your network under TCP under UDP 
Now you can see that there are there is some traffic for SMB as well. Uh, SMB is the server message block protocol. It is be it is used for uh, transferring files across network. So if you have shared a file on your computer and you are trying to copy that file from from a different network from a different computer, then you will be using the SMB protocol for that. We also have the logical link control, the IPv6 protocol, Cisco protocol. So you can see all the protocols that have been uh, that have been seen in your capture file and what is the percentage of packets of each protocol in the capture file. While writing the reports for any analysis of a capture file, you must make a note of all the filters that you have used or prepared. These keep separate copies of the original capture files and the one after using the filters which has the important information because that information is presentable in a way to prove that uh, this is the cause to, to pinpoint the exact cause of the problem. You can always use the screenshots of the important snippets or analysis of the packets. Um, please write a detailed analysis of the issue on how you identified the issue in a capture file and its proof in the capture files. So if you were seeing that the clients are not able to download a file from the server, you took a packet capture. Now in the capture you can first of all in, in your analysis in your analysis file you can begin with the statement that the capture was taken on the server or it was taken on the client if it was taken on the server then for for how long did you capture the packets if you used any capture filters you can mention them as well after that you can provide the total size of the capture file and if possible an md5 sum as well to provide the integrity of the file um, once you have opened the file and after that you know that you are troubleshooting a program that is running on IIS and only the HTTP protocol is being used. So then you can use the display filter as HTTP that will give you the information that is related only to the HTTP protocol. Once you have done that then you can look at the HTTP requests to see if you can find any errors that are being trans uh, that are being transmitted from the server to the client so the errors may look like http 403 um, http 402 404 so this will help you to uh, to to decide your next course of action while troubleshooting this issue all right everyone thanks a lot for your time and for watching this video thank you